back to our Tuesday show. How are you? Brandon Dempsey here, Worship Team Training. How are you guys? And uh, we are just kicking things off on this fantastic Tuesday. So glad that you're with us. Thanks for coming in. What's up, Worship Team Training? And all of our friends, worship leaders and pastors, uh, audio technicians, of course, our drummers, because that's what the show is about today. What is going on with you? Hope you guys are doing great. Uh, you can see that we have a lot going on today, a lot that we're going to be talking about between the communication effort between drummers, worship leaders, and band alike. So what's up? How you doing? If you would, please swipe and invite. Let everybody know what is going on to uh, share this out on Facebook and also Periscope. And um, we are going to be digging into it. And as we do, we also invite you to, this is your first time to watch the program. Hey, thanks so much for coming in. And we ask that you please, in the comment box window below, just say your name and the city or state or country of where you're from so we know who we're always broadcasting with. And also we thank all of our faithful listeners to our iTunes and iHeartRadio subscribers. And if you haven't done that, you need to go to worshipteentraining.com slash podcast where you can find all of our podcasts there and all of our shows in general. So we thank you guys so much for coming out. Today we are talking about drums. Um, I also want to bring up the fact that tomorrow is going to be a great day. We're going to be having Ryan Clare, singer-songwriter from the Northeast, is going to be coming out to do a special brown bag music with us tomorrow right here on the same channel on Facebook Live at 12 p.m. right here, Worship Teen Training, and you'll find everything with his new album called uh, Less Traveled Road, and he's going to be coming from, uh, he's going to be doing some of the songs from his album, which is going to be great. And also, you don't want to miss this coming Thursday. Thursday, we have Alex Avila. Avila. Uh, Alex was on with us back in November to do a show on drums, and he's going to come back again. Glad we didn't scare him off. To talk more about drums and uh, the communication of what drummers can be doing better and how they can be better working with their worship leaders as well. And uh, if you want to find our whole, our whole schedule, please go to wttu.co slash events. So let's jump right into it. My name is Brandon Dempsey. I'm glad to have you here. I'm a follower of Jesus and happen to be CEO and director of worshipteentraining.com and also our university site, which is called wttu.co. You can check out our memberships for worship leaders, on-demand content, and then back over at the worshipteentraining.com site, you can look at our workshops for worship leaders and teams, our mentoring studies for worship leaders, and everything else is there. I also want to remind you guys, uh, we are uh, right now adding more content to our membership site, which again is the WTTU.co. You want to get there before March the 1st because right now you can have big savings and you want to check that out. So just go to WTTU.co slash enroll and find out more information there. So we want to do this as we're going through today's program, uh, asking you guys questions about your drums and asking about you know, how do you work with your drums, your drummer? Uh, you may be a drummer yourself. You may have a question about how, you know, what's to happen with working with your worship leader. Uh, or you could be a musician or a vocalist. So we want your questions. We ask that you guys go ahead and chime in and do that. And I'm going to roll on with today's lesson to talk a little bit about, you know, strengthening communication efforts between the worship leader and the drummer. But also, what are some important things that worship leaders need to know about drums? Now, I'm going to be um, teaching from here uh, about what my drummer and I were doing this past weekend. Um, I did some video takes there. And also, I'm coming at you as not just a worship leader musician, but I too had started out on drums. So I know a great deal about drums, about the instrument, and working with drummers. And so for me, it's easy to communicate and dialogue with drummers and percussionists because you know, I've been one myself uh, forever. And so uh, guitar is more... Guitar and keyboard is what I really lead by, but drums and percussion, I have a huge background. And in fact, I've taught with Promark Drumsticks, and I've been their teacher in Dorsey for uh, the past close 20 years now. So I've done clinics, I've done things statewide, and um, I, I fall back a lot on my drumming experience because I feel that rhythm is one of the strongest components that we have as a team. And it's one thing that we can be of course, as a unit, cohesively, and of course to be in the same key, but as many of you know, it's a quite different thing if we're not all on the same tempo planet. And so 
for me, pulse and click is very, very strong. I take that seriously as a worship leader and as a musician. So I'm constantly thinking time. Uh, but there are a lot of worship leaders, as you know, and you may be one of them, that maybe drums is just not your bag. I mean, maybe drums is something that's kind of a, it's not an afterthought, but you just don't know much about it. So I'm just going to teach you some of the basics of uh, some drum speak, let's say, to strengthen that communication. And also point out some things here in the video of some things that I've done with my drummer. So let's jump right into it. Uh, simply, I start with this, number one. As we, as we look at our drumming and we look at the way that we um, work with our worship teams, uh, you know, language is everything. And, and uh, we, we made a joke, Barry and I were joking about this before the, uh, the article that we posted. That, you know, drums are no different. I mean, speaking, it's, it's not speaking to a second class engagement, like do this or do that kind of madness. And nor is it beatboxing in front of your drummer telling them, hey, I, or her, I want you to you know, play it like that. Uh, drummers will look at you funny. So how do you speak in such a way that uh, would be beneficial for you and your drummer? Uh, number one, I, I say this, I, a, strong, a strong proponent of this is to know the instrument know thy instrument and that means if you are a worship leader and maybe you don't know much about drums at all i encourage you to check out uh just the beginning drumming books like hal leonard um, or some of the others uh, vic firth and begin to study what the hi-hat does what the snare characteristics are uh the essence of the kick drum and familiarize yourself with each component of the kit because that's going to give you a better understanding as what they do and also it'll keep you from saying silly stuff like yeah can you can you do that wobbly wop doohickey thing uh, again drummers are not going to know what you're talking about they're just going to keep looking at you like okay do you have anything more intelligent to say so i know that even from my drummer he wants something specific from me and he'll say brandon do you want quarter notes on the hat do you want a dotted eighth in the kick you know, so again, I want to slow down because a lot of you guys may be thinking, yeah, but Brandon, I don't know all about that dotted eighth stuff and I'm not a drummer. So I'm just going to break it down very, very simple for you and hopefully we can just get it that way. Again, I welcome your questions. You got them. Uh, hit me up. Let me know what they are so that way I can better address them. And I'm going to show you the video in just a second. So I say trust the experts. If, you're, uh, if your drummer is there, uh, they have a talent and a gift for a reason. Um, it doesn't really matter what, what level they're at because they're the ones behind the kit, you're not. And if you are maybe working with a weaker drummer, then as a leader, you need to be doing what you can to empower that musician and bring them videos or you know, spend some time with them after the rehearsal or before rehearsal and say, hey, can we just get you know, the one pattern down with the, with the um, quarter notes on the kick you know, and practice playing with the click or something like that. If you have an advanced drummer, Trust them, and, uh, and don't be afraid to, to tell them what you want in terms of, you know, in this passage here, during the verse intro, can you give me more of a softer sound? Uh, can you build it up as we get towards the pre-chorus? Don't be afraid to tell your drummer what you want because I've spoken with a lot of worship leaders, and they've asked me, well, Brandon, how do I tame my drummer? And they go on to tell me, well, yeah, they just keep playing and playing and playing, and they never stop. And I say to them, well, do you give them any direction and they're like well no because i'm trusting them that they know it okay well that's the number one downfall as a leader is never just assume upon other people's behalf or your own because you don't know and uh, many drummers will tell you the same thing they don't really want to be left out you know like a boo in the ocean uh, they want the direction they want to have a good feel of where you're going in the song because they just want to give it their best and if you feel like, well, I don't want to tell them too much, or maybe because I don't know enough, well, as your job as the worship leader, you need to strengthen that component because it really does depend on you to team up with your drummer. I would look at it that way. Don't look at it as the, well, they're always playing the crash cymbal every two measures. Okay, I mean, that could be a problem. Then speak into that and say, you know, like my drummer right here, his name is Joel. And I just tell him, hey, Joel, instead of, let's say, you know, he had a crashing problem like every other bar. And I just say to him, hey, you know what? What you're doing sounds great. Would you mind 
spacing that out a little bit. Maybe instead of every other bar, how about we try every other 16 bars, you know, something like that. But the better that you can encourage your musicians, and this is just a great way to go in working with bass players, other guitar players, pianists, vocalists, never attack with the criticism. Never just go off and just say, oh, that's wrong, or no, that's not the way I want it. Because all that's going to do is just breed a lot of animosity. It's going to bring some negativity, and you really don't want that in your team. I mean, the better way that I, like for me, what I do is I just talk about the nature of the song, and I just ask the band, hey, you know, this is our form. Uh, what do you hear in the passage of the, of the verse or the chorus? And I get a lot of input, and I derive a lot of energy from them because uh, the team is what really makes the song. And I look to the drummer, number one. I always ask Joel before I ask anybody else. I'll say, Joel, what do you hear in this passage? Um, you know, does it like a tom groove? Uh, I try to get more backbone from him because I know that if my drummer is going to be jazzed about playing a piece of music, it's only going to make it that much better. But if, if I'm telling him constantly what to do, then he's not breathing his own art into it. So... Again, trust the experts, trust your drummer, they're there for a reason. Um, as I said before, know your parts, uh, know the parts of the kit. Uh, things like sticks even, stick sizes are very, very important. As far as if you know that, uh, maybe you don't know that drummers have different sizes of, of uh, you know, the thickness of the sticks are smaller, they're thicker, they're bigger. Uh, 5A's is a, is a model, is a common model. 5A is a very good medium stick. Uh, 7As are more of a light jazz stick, uh, 5Bs are, are real heavy, so you want to make sure that uh, the drummer is playing with sticks that are conducive to the song, uh, especially to the room. Uh, we have a very good room, so our drummer can use regular 5As and get away with it, and it's not a problem. Uh, however, there could be instances in other worship settings where you're playing with a 7A, a lighter stick, and it's still too loud. And this is where, yes, the drummers hear the dreaded words, hot rods. And they're like, I don't want to play that. It's like kind of playing on, it's like playing on an electronic kit because you can't really get a good feel for the sticks. Now, if you're in that situation, I would encourage your drummer, because I've heard a lot of complaints about drummers playing on electric kits, those that are playing with hot rods, and they're like, you know, it's not natural, it doesn't feel good. This is where you as the leader need to come in and tell them, well, you know, we're trying to play what's conducive to the room, so how can we help the worshipers here? Uh, what can we do to help serve the rest of the band and the song? Because if you're playing with heavy sticks in a small room, you're asking for a lot of trouble. And that may be the reason why um, you may have church people that tell you, hey, the drums are too loud. It could be the sticks. It may not be the miking of the kit. It could be something that's just as simple. Um, don't be afraid to utilize, you know, brushes, uh, nylon brushes, uh, wire brushes. I mean, there's different textures that you can use within drums. Uh, hot rods are always great, but there's also broom brushes. Um, I mean, a lot of guys are using like felted mallets now, uh, made of sheepskin or fabric. Uh, they work great on toms. I mean, uh, if you checked out the brand new U2 album, uh, Larry Mullen Jr. is using on some of the, the tracks that they recorded, uh, I forgot the one that I'm thinking of, but it's in the middle of the album, and he's using a type of felt uh, sheepskin-type mallets on toms, and it sounds great. You can also throw a towel over the drums. You can throw um, a small rag or something to dampen the, the kit, dampen the head. So there's a lot of different things that you can try. And, you know, be creative with your drummer. I mean, ask them, you know, what's uh, can you try this or that? I mean, don't be afraid to, you know, give them a little rain, but you also want to, uh, bring them back in because I know like any musician if you give them a mile or an inch They're gonna stretch it way beyond that. So uh, Are careful you you want to be so the um, talking real quick about the rest of the kit before I get to the video here is um, Your hi-hat. Okay, the two symbols that splash together uh, Your closed hat is where it's tight. You hold it down with the foot. You want to get a good chink sound a chick sound out of the hi-hat uh, slosh hat is like half and half and then the open hat, of course, is open. Uh, foot pedal sound is um, with the left foot, or if you have a, um, a lefty player, then they're going to play with the right foot. Um, I'm throwing out some things, but hi-hats you know, are quintessential for a contemporary music because that's mainly what everyone's locking into is what the hi-hat is doing and the snare is keeping time. Uh, for instance, a jazz band setting, 
The rest of the band would be following the ride symbol on the other side of the kit and the hi-hat as well. So in contemporary, it's flipped. It's hi-hat here, snare here. Um, know about the, the kick drum and what it can do. Um, you know, as far as we call it a kick drum, why? Because we don't want to get confused by saying bass because the bass player may pick, you know, peek out somewhere. And we want to have a good distinction between bass drum uh, or bass player. We want to just use kick drum and bass player instead. That's why we say the word kick. Um, snare. So basically, I'm going to play the video and I'm just going to show you what I've done here with Joel and what we've done to keep in time. Now notice uh, the kit is simple. It's just a, a very simple three-piece uh, kit and he's got a few extra symbols here. But what I'd like for you to focus in on is just the simplicity that we're doing of the actual uh, tune. So there's not a lot of fills going on. It's just grooves. So I'll play a little bit for you right here. I'm going to let him count off. And I'm playing with him. And he's got a nice solid groove right there. This is something that can complicate it. And I can get a right on it. Okay. So just stopping right there, uh, some of the things that I noticed is that Number one, he is just right in tune with me. If, I mean, the number one communication besides voice for uh, drummers, I mean, drummers communicate with their hands, worship leaders communicate with their heart. I've said that before. So as a worship leader, I have to, my heart may be thinking about the song, but I have to use the right words to tell my drummer what he, what he needs. Drummer is the same thing. You know, he's, he's one to look for feel and groove. So the cool thing is that, uh, the second item is that Joel is, he's locking in with me as far as his eyes. I mean, he's locked in on me and, and every good musician knows that you're always giving good eye contact no matter what. Because if I'm not paying attention to Joel, I'm just letting him play what he wants, he's looking for that gravity, that anchor somewhere, you know. And um, it's, it's only going to empower uh, that music and, you know, sanctify it, so to speak if we're both on the same page. So he's looking at me, I'm looking at him. And notice the groove that he's playing right here. Just simple eighth notes on the hat. One and two and three and four and um, cut, um, cut. Now I'm doing my own beatbox right here. But you get the idea, the, the kick, he's not playing a dun, da, ga, 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 dun, da, ga, ga. He's just very simple on one. And uh, that right there is our primary beat. In any kind of situation, in any kind of tempo, learning to find one is paramount with any song. So we're, we're playing actually um, the song Yes and Amen in this recording. And we're just taking a very slow tempo. And just keeping it straight ahead because the simpler that we can keep that groove, everything else that we put on top of it would be what? Bass guitar, piano, another guitar. And the more that we add instruments, we want to keep the drums free. So that way, eighth notes are nice and clear. Everybody can hear it. Um, and, you know, just the way he's playing. Okay, the other idea is that his... Uh, the cross rim that he's making, uh, that's what we call it. He's not actually playing on the snare head. He's crossing uh, with the stick part, half of the head, and with the rim. And he's using his palm on top of that snare to make a cupping type of sound right on top of that head that makes it sound like a woodblock, okay? So the tone in the palm is very, very important. And what's great about what Joel's doing is that he's keeping still that two and four consistent one. Two, three, four, one, two. So any type of playing that we're doing, he's locking in hat and cross from together, and he's not blurring the lines. So that makes it easier for like what I'm playing here, if you can hear it. So I have a dotted eighth on my electric guitar, and it, we're, we're kind of going for a John Mayer type feel. And what's great about it is that as he's locking in his eights and I'm locking into what he's doing, it pops out the guitar. Okay. 
So uh, that's it for our recording here. And yeah, we, we've taken a, another tune that's a little bit faster. But again, the idea, and I'll just give you a different camera shot, but the idea is everything that Joel is doing and what I'm doing, we're trying to make a cohesive unit together. And that should be the goal of any drummer, worship leader, or band is that what you're doing together matters and you want to have that team effort. So, you know, I would, yeah, there's like a drum shield here, but, you know, don't let there be a figurative uh, drum shield between you and the drummer where both of you are kind of working your own silos. You want to team up with them. Um, you know, I've said this before about relationships. It's very, very huge. Uh, make sure that you have that down with your drummer and with all your teammates on stage because, I mean, if one person's not getting along with the other, it just makes your work that much harder. So let's take a different tune here. We're going, uh, we're going to play Glorious Day. And um, as we've done this song, I want you to uh, focus in, again, the simplicity of what Joel's doing on the hi-hat and his snare and kick. Now, there's not a lot going on, I know, but again, when you're, when you're focusing on just the, the context of the groove, that becomes a lot more important than just him playing a bunch of drum fills and just digging right into it. So, again, he's holding down the line, eighth notes and hat, and now quarters in the kick, and so what I'm playing right here, we're, uh, we're locking in. And so basically, what's happening with Joel is that he's just keeping time with what's happening in the band. He's not worried again about, you know, when's my drum solo coming up? I mean, it's more of the, what can I contribute here? I've heard a very good, um, maybe, I'm trying to think if it was either uh, Carl Albrecht or um, Steve Gumas, a uh, great keyboard player. Years back, he said, you know, when I'm playing behind the kit, I ask myself, you know, two questions. If I add to this, how's that going to benefit the band? Um, or if I if I take or if can I take away something? Would that benefit the band? You know. Um, so anything he asked, he said the question. You know, um, anything that I add, is it going to disrupt what's already happening? I think that's a really great rule of thumb with any band, with any kind of music that you're playing. Always ask a good ask a good musical decision question. You know, is this the right time to play this note? Or is this the right, if you're a singer, the right passage to sing this one harmony part? Um, I think so many of us are so excited about playing, especially when we're in church or with our family, we're having fun. Um, it's easy for the nerves to kind of let go and you get excited, but then when you look at the whole parameter of everything, everybody's out, everybody's playing, there's no shape, there's no context. Uh, there's no um, dynamics. So for me as a player, as a musician, I mean, yes, even when I'm leading worship, I still think of myself as a musician because I want to fit in with the band. I want to pull back. And I think it's good for all worship leaders and drummers to kind of pull themselves out of the band and kind of look at things from a broader bird's eye perspective because you kind of have this producer view in mind and you as the worship leader, you're the one that's in control of that. So you have the ability to shape your drummer and to shape the music in the right way that you want, but you gotta give good direction. You have to learn how to speak drum. So I've gone over a few things with you already about the parts of the kit. Uh, learning how to count is huge. So if maybe you haven't studied music, like you don't need to be a scholar of music theory to learn how to count. It's just simple, one, two, three, four. Uh, that's quarter notes, and then learn your eighth notes in between, one and two and three and four and sixteenth notes. Um, if you can communicate better that way, it's only going to make you a better musician. So if I'm able to say, hey, Joel, can you give me sixteenth notes on the hat? Can you give me two and four, a backbeat, that's simple too, on snare? You know, then he'll do it. 
If we're playing in 6-8, I'll say, hey, in 6-8, can you um, play eighth notes in the hat and uh, play on the strong beat of four on the snare? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So I'm able to better communicate with him, and he's not guessing. But again, it's, it's, it's improving the sound quality. It's improving the acumen of the band. And also for you as a worship leader, you're becoming a lot more uh, skilled and the way that you approach music. So I hope that helps. Uh, the whole idea is to give you guys a little bit of a context of what drummers need and also what worship leaders need. So I think both of these are very, very important. Uh, you want to go to WTTU.co to watch other great drummers. We have Zorro the drummer. We have a lot of his videos on our show. Also, Carl Albrecht, who I've mentioned before. And don't forget Garrett Goodwin. Garrett was with us this past December, I think, and Garrett's going to come back again. Garrett's a drummer for Carrie Underwood, and he is going to come back with some more uh, material for us that I'll show you, and we'll have him as another guest. And there's just a lot of great material out there, so you can get a lot of the stuff that we already already have at WTTU.co. You want to become a member because we have other great things coming up, like tomorrow, Ryan Clare is going to be with us doing songs from his new album, Less Traveled Road. It's right here at 12 p.m. on Facebook Live, right here, Worship Team Training. And then also Thursday, we have our next guest, and uh, our next guest is going to be talking about, you know, uh, drumming, Alex Avila. We had him before. Alex, great all-around uh, all dude. He drums over in Thailand. He's been all over the world. He's also the drummer for Christ uh, Safari. So he's got a lot of great things to say ask that you guys join us for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, guys, uh, we put all the stuff out there for you. We, we thank you for your support. I thank you so much for watching these playbacks and live broadcasts and the iTunes and podcasts. Thank you so much for your attention, for your uh, participation of it all. And uh, we ask that you would leave us a, if you're listening by iTunes, give us a high rank. Uh, better yet, share it. If you're watching the video and you like the video, then please share this with a friend. Let people know what's going on because, look, we're doing this for you because we believe that God has given you a vision as a worship leader and as a team, and he wants you to complete the purpose that he already has put in your heart. So uh, remember, before we close, don't be perfect. Just let Jesus lead you in life daily and then also to lead you within worship. Love you guys. And we'll see you back tomorrow at 12 p.m. Thursday and also our next show next Tuesday as well. So thanks again for being here. Love you. See you soon.